Hey, saints of God, this is Robin Kirby Gatto. Welcome today. It is Wednesday, the 10th. We are moving forward into this month as we get closer and closer to the middle of the month and be expectant for God to bring your miracle, your breakthrough. As you join on today, we're going to see what Holy Spirit has and we're going to pray for those that are enduring the battle of Michael right now. So come on here, be excited, and we are just going to hope in the Lord. Amen. His hope does not disappoint. Amen. The hope of the Lord God does not disappoint. Amen and amen. As you join on, saints of God, be expectant. I cannot emphasize that enough. Holy Spirit wants you to be expectant. Amen. You just hook your faith up with the Word of God. And we're going to come on here together and be in agreement. And we're also going to pray in a little bit. We're going to pray for those in the pathway of Michael. So as you join on here, before we actually get started in today's message, we're going to be looking at those that are in the pathway of Michael, and we're going to be praying against that hurricane. Amen. Hey, Kathy, so good to see you. God bless you. Awesome to have you on here. Hey, Kelly, so good to see you, woman of God. We're going to have a super awesome day. Amen. Amen and amen. I'm just fixing my, oops, sorry. I'm just fixing my Facebook. Hello, hello, hello. So good to see you. Hey, Jay Woolley. God bless you. Hey, Susan Morris. Hey, Kim. God bless you. Hey, Patricia. God bless you. Thank you for joining in. As we get started today, saints of God, I'm going to pray. And then later on, after the message, we're also going to pray for those that are in the pathway of Michael. And we're going to be listening for what Holy Spirit has to say. This is my son. Hold on one second. Hello? Mm-hmm. Okay, sounds good. I'm on live. Bye-bye. Hello, hello, hello. That was my son. So good to see you. Hey, Sherry Stedham, I love you, friend. We are praying for all of you down there. Praying for every single one of you. Amen. As we get to the end of this broadcast, we are going to be praying for those that are in the pathway of Michael. So you hang on to the very end of this broadcast we're going to come into agreement, and we're going to be praying for those that are in the pathway of that storm. Amen. As we get started today, we are just going to pray and see where Holy Spirit leads us. Amen. Thank you, Father, for the power of your word. Your word that has all authority, all strength, that gives us endurance, hallelujah, in our inner man, by your spirit of might, that God, even as you bring us together today, that you give us such discernment of your word, hallelujah, to know it with understanding, so that God, it is etched on our heart with a hundredfold standing grain harvest, and it comes forth as rhema, hallelujah, that sword of the spirit that comes against ruling powers and principalities, against the powers of darkness in the name of Jesus, so that we can move forward for your cause your purpose where the light pierces the darkness and the darkness cannot overcome it. It cannot put it out. It is unreceptive to it in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, Virginia. So good to see you on here. Hey, Matt. So awesome to have you on here. Thank you all for joining in today. God wants me to share a couple of things. And again, we're going to give a portion of today's broadcast to prayer and agreement for those that are in the pathway of Michael. Amen. But before we get to that, God wants me to share different things that Holy Spirit has been showing me. Oh my goodness. It is absolutely powerful. And I know that you are on here. And if you're on here, I can guarantee you, you're going to have a witness of Holy Spirit that you have been going through these things as well. Some of you saw my post last week. I believe it was last Friday where I just talked about, it just seemed like I was bleaching everything that could be bleached. It was like bleach week. And some of you began to share also that you were having the same circumstances, that you were either doing a fall cleaning or something that entailed you to use bleach. And so I got so many people that said they were doing bleach. And it was so funny as God had me cleaning both the inside of our house as well as my vehicle, my Jeep, on the covers, with bleach. 
the message of God just kept coming forth over and over and over again about the emphasis that he has been talking about over the last several weeks, over the last few months, which is the emphasis of sanctification, purification. And before we actually get into this process and get into the word of the Lord and what he has for us today to reveal it, as well as some other things that God revealed to me the other day that I want to bring in, because he wants us to get understanding. Faith comes by hearing the word, and that word hearing actually means understanding. So let's look particularly at Romans 8. Romans 8 is an awesome scripture. It is our life scripture to stand on, to know that God will never leave us nor forsake us. He will finish the work that he has promised to do in us. That which he has started, he will finish it. Amen. And that nothing will ever separate us from him. So look at Romans 8, 28. We're going to start right there, and then we're going to go into other scriptures that are leading into this sanctification process. Amen. Romans 8, 28. We are assured, know that God being a partner in their labor, that all things work together and are fitting into a plan for good to and for those who love God and are called according to His design and purpose. For those whom He foreknew, of whom He was aware and loved beforehand, He also destined from the beginning for ordaining them to be molded into the image of His Son and share inwardly His likeness that he might become the firstborn among many brethren. And those whom he thus foreordained, woo, hallelujah, he also called. Many are what? Called, but what? Few are chosen. So this is where we now see the chosen fashioned right after we see the word called here in Romans 8.30. I'm reading out the Amplified Classic. It's my preference for reading scripture. And those whom he thus foreordained, he also called. And those whom he called, he also justified, acquitted, made righteous, putting them in right standing with himself. And those whom he justified, he also glorified, raising them to a heavenly dignity, and condition or state of being. What then shall we say to all of this? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be our foe? If God is on our side, he who did not withhold or spare even his own son, but gave him up for us all, will he not also with him freely and graciously give us all other things? Who shall bring any charge against God's elect, when it is God who justifies. Let that sink in, saints of God. That is who puts us in right relation to himself. Who shall come forward and accuse or impeach those whom God has chosen? Will God who acquits us, who is there to condemn us? Will Christ Jesus, the Messiah, who died, or rather who was raised from the dead, who is at the right hand of God, actually pleading as he intercedes for us. Who shall ever separate us from Christ's love? Shall suffering and affliction and tribulation, or calamity and distress, or persecution or hunger, or destitution or peril, or sword, even as it is written, for thy sake we are put to death all the day long. We are regarded and counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet amid all these things, we are more than conquerors. Woo! And gain a surpassing victory through him who loved us. For I am persuaded beyond doubt and sure that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things impending and threatening, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us 
from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So as we are looking at what I'm referring to with this particular revelation that Holy Spirit brought me last week about the bleach, we are looking at this particular word, justification. And a lot of people, those of you who are on here, you're already aware of the word and this process of justification. But for this particular teaching and for wisdom to be imparted to us of great maturity from above by Holy Spirit, we're going to look again at this particular word in Romans 8, particularly for justification. And God is going to bring the emphasis in this particular hour about the end of this year, 2018, and how the Father is justifying those in 2018 that he will glorify in 2019. Amen. Romans 8, we're looking at this justification process as we see in Scripture. So let's look at those that are justified in Romans 8, 30. Those whom he called, he also justified. This word justified in, he, in Greek is de, uh, de, de, let me make sure I say it right. Dikai uh, uh, o, o. De, Hold on, I'm having trouble with this word. Hold on. Dikai a uh, o. Dikai a uh, o. A uh, o. That's how you remember this word. Dikai a uh, o. This word particular, dikai a uh, o, actually in Greek means to render. It means to make free. It means to be righteous. It means to be innocent. It comes from the particular Greek word dikaios, which actually means to have righteous, to be just, to be holy, to be innocent. This also comes from a, the particular Greek word, oh, well, I've seen this word a lot, dika. And this word particularly actually means vengeance, judgment, and punishment, decision, principle, justice. So look at this word justified, dikai, uh-oh, that particular word comes from this Greek word, dike. And this Greek word actually means justice, it means a decision, it means an execution, it also means judgment. Now remember what I've been saying in the last few Facebook Lives, that judgment is coming, but it means a decision. So for us, saints of God, it is going to be a decision for us, as in a court of law. My law background has got given me a true passion to know the Word of God like a contract, to know it in the four corners, can I say, of the contract, which you look, it was just actually contract language, which is actually this whole word, that we look at this whole word in context, and we look at the meaning of that word, and we look at the particular nuances of that word. And so particularly today, we're looking at the word justification, and in this justification process, God is saying, listen, I'm justifying you because I'm about to render my decision. And that justification process we were brought into, of course, with Christ Jesus when we came into salvation. Amen. That is first and foremost. But God also gave us other revelation through this process as we work out our salvation in what? Fear and trembling. We cannot do it in our own strength. Holy Spirit in us does the working of the Lord. We have to be willing for His Word to be made known. What do I mean? When I was an alcoholic and God delivered me in 2002 on Resurrection Sunday by the power of Holy Spirit entering my person and shaking my whole body and breaking bondages and yokes, when He did that, before that justification and glorification process, I kept clinging to the Word, and I kept refusing for the law to stay in my person. Although I was drinking a whole lot, and everybody knew I had a problem, I refused to agree that that problem was in my person, 
And I would say, I am not an alcoholic. I have the mind of Christ. I am the righteousness of Christ Jesus. I'm seated with Christ Jesus in heavenly places. And so this process is the process of what we see as justification. What does that mean? That means that God is bringing judgment against what? The enemy. He's making a decision against the enemy that the enemy is defeated in your life and he is making a judgment for you. I'll go into this particularly in God's Firewall Healing of the Soul, Session 2, The Wind, where I show you the dynamic of how Holy Spirit comes in and how Holy Spirit works with the Word. Session 1, The Light of God's Firewall Healing of the Soul. They're on Amazon if you want to get them. Session 1, The Light, actually talks about the light of Jesus Christ, who He is, His nature, and the Word. Session 2, The Wind, talks about Holy Spirit and how Holy Spirit comes alongside the Word and does the power, releases the power from the Father that is needed in your present need so that the Word of God will be made known. So this process is known as justification. So I needed justification manifest in my life when I was in bondage to alcohol. I needed justification manifest where God would make a decision against the enemy's lies and say, no longer can the enemy come against Robin on this issue of bondage to alcoholism. And I make a decision for her because she agrees with my word. She is co-laboring with my word. And although she has but a little strength, she has held on to my word and not denied my name. So I'm visiting her today and I'm visiting her in power. Woo, hallelujah. And that is what the saints have to realize in greater measure. Because of familiarity with God, we do not wait on Him. We, first of all, don't know our need. That's the first thing. And the second thing is we do not wait on Him. We are a fast food, fast-paced generation. Everything is give it to me now. And it's immediate gratification. And we don't need gratification, saints of God. We need justification. Because when you get gratification, that is going to address your flesh nature, your carnal nature. But when you get justification, hallelujah, it is going to set you free from your carnal nature. And it is going to bring you the power of the anointing of Holy Spirit that will visit you, hallelujah, and on the day of God's visitation in your person, you will be filled with strength, with the spirit of might, and you will see the spirit of the Lord upon your person, and God will break yokes of oppression. And this is where we have to find balance. When you are so tied into a spirit of religion, what do I mean? I've been there. I was in a ditch. I dug it really deep. And those of you who know my story, I've shared with it how I almost sent my son to hell with my religiosity. That was many, many years ago, over a decade ago. And God rebuked me, and that storm came to our house, and it visited our house, and I thought it was my son's trial. And God said, no, Robin, this is your trial, because this spirit of religiosity is so strong on you that you do not know the power of my grace because you have dug a ditch and gotten out of balance. In this place where I was out of balance, God woke me up to the perfect love that I needed. Although I walked in a measure of love, you know I am so super extreme. Can you tell? And because I'm so extreme... When I dove into God, got set free by the power of Holy Spirit from alcoholism, I was already studying the fear of the Lord. I was becoming a master's in the fear of the Lord and eventually a PhD in the fear of the Lord. And I was just consuming the fear of the Lord. And I wasn't consuming the love of God. And I got out of balance and I dug myself into a ditch. And as a result... God had to deal with me on that issue, of course, first and foremost, with my son. After he dealt with me on that issue with my son, 
God still had to pull back another layer of that veil that was hindering me from entering into the greater purpose that God had for me. And the way that he did this, the means by which he did this, is he woke me up to the place in which religiosity, religion, was causing me to be critical of myself. I wasn't really, well, I was critical of other people. Now that I think about it, I was so in the ditch of the fear of the Lord that when we would sit in church, I literally thought everybody in the church was going to hell except for my family. That is how extreme I was. I mean, I was super, super duper extreme. I was like, Navy SEALs fear the Lord. Everybody else is going to hell. You better obey God. You need to repent. I mean, I was massively extreme. But remember, I had come from a place of being so bound up that God was bringing me into a place of becoming balanced. And I remember, oh my goodness, I remember, and I still pray. I love prayer. Prayer is my favorite thing. And I remembered if I would always pray, 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 pray in the pew, pray in my Sunday school worship chair. And if anybody would come near my person while I was praying, and I still pray before service. When I minister places, I'm still in prayer. I'm in that prayer tent wherever God has me seated. If anybody would come near my person and touch me on the shoulder, I would immediately look at them like they had just invaded my space and they were going to get rebuked. And I'm telling you, I was off the charts. I was super extreme. And I'm just giving you this background because God wants me to give you this background because I think there are some that are listening that really are going to get set free from this testimony. Amen. And so in those areas, I was super extreme. I just knew that very, very, very few people that I knew were going to heaven. I was fully convinced until God began to deliver me. And this is what actually was where the rubber met the road. Reading the Bible of God four hours a day, praying two hours a day, continually on and on every week, every month. Again, this is early 2000 that I'm trying to relate to you. 2002 to 2008. Continually, continually reading, reading, reading because I had so much time at that time being just young in the Lord and wanting that meat and Holy Spirit had removed a veil. Holy Spirit had brought me understanding. God was teaching me so much. He put me on the Isaiah 35, 8 highway of holiness and he just started launching me into the word like never before. By reading so much word of God, I had to understand grace because there was a place in which God showed me my need and because of the extremism, extremism, that's pretty much it, because of being so extreme in the fear of the Lord, I got to the point where I was just totally messed up. And I was just telling God, God, and this was about 2005, 2006, I said, God, I just can't be a Christian. It's impossible, God. I am just going to give up. I am going to give up because I cannot be a Christian. It's impossible. Because this is what was going on. And I'm trying to help you. And I've got this in some of my books. So you can read. It's in different books. Because there's someone that's listening today that knows someone that has this issue. Before we actually get to the rest of justification and what God is doing. God wants me to share this because there's someone that needs freedom. And God is going to bring you grace by the end of this broadcast. And so I just told Rich. I would just be totally messed up every day and I would just have my head like this and I'd read four hours of the Bible, two hours of prayer and this is constant for years where I'm doing this and I'm in this place and I finally say, God, there's just no way. I cannot do this. And I said, what if I accidentally picked up a pencil and that's literally the example that I got. What if I accidentally pick up a pencil when I'm in some place and I walk out with a pencil, I would have stolen a pencil and I would not have known it and I would go straight to hell. Now y'all might think that that is really extreme, but you have to understand my personality. 
I am all the way in for the Lord. And the personality that He has given me, He has justified my personality to bring me back into balance to the person that I am today so that I can teach with love. Because when I taught under that particular anointing, oh my goodness, when I taught under that particular anointing and they let me teach in Sunday school for the first time, oh my goodness, I have to tell this story so you understand how extreme I was. When I was teaching Sunday school in 2005, a man left Sunday school and he went straight to the emergency room. He did not even go to the sanctuary to the big service to main service. The man was literally scared to death because when I got through preaching, I'm telling you, I did not have the love of God to balance me at that time and I was utterly convinced that everyone in the building was going to hell and it was my one opportunity to preach the strong message of the Lord and just get one person that would not be going to hell and so the man left the Sunday school and he went straight to the emergency room he called the elder of the class who was not there that day and the elder of the class had to help him because he said he was having a heart attack. Do you hear that, saints of God? Now that shows you how extreme I was. So now I get to this point in about 2006, 2007, where I am like, God, I, I just cannot do it. I give up because if I take this pencil accidentally and I leave, this, I leave a place, I will have stolen it. I just cannot do it. It's impossible. And that is when God told me, he said, Robin, this word you have to understand. And I have this in book two of God's Fall School, School Heal of, Healing of the Soul. God's Fall Healing of the Soul, Session 2, The Wind. I've got this more in detail so you'll understand. Because God is giving you understanding of the word, amen. God said, Robin, you have to understand. You have been reading four hours daily for years of the word. And you don't understand, Robin. You're bringing judgment on yourself. And I went, what? What, God? Tell me more. And God said, Robin, as in Jeremiah 1, where I anointed his mouth, and when he spoke, he had power over kingdoms and nations to uproot, tear down, and destroy. And then God said, Robin, remember when you've seen deliverances? And you've seen people try to cast out devils and they did not have the anointing. And instead it stirred up that devil. And that devil was ripping and tearing that person. And Holy Spirit taught me back then. You never come against a devil unless God has given you authority. And when God gives you authority it's because that thing's going to be cast out. If you see a devil tearing or harming a person... Your first responsibility is to bind that thing in the name of Jesus. Say, I bind you in Jesus' name. You will not operate. And the next thing you need to do is speak peace and shalom over that soul. And you need to put scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture inside of that soul. Because that scripture is going to bring, bring that work of justification. Amen. That right standing in God that we have is because of the work of the blood shed on the cross of Christ Jesus and the power of His resurrection. And so the same means on a different angle would happen with me except it was with the Word. And God said, Robin, do you see it? The Word is uprooting. It's tearing down and it's destroying the lie in your person. And so what you need, Robin, is you need grace. You need Holy Spirit. And I went, oh my goodness. And God said, Robin, you have to understand. When you are reading the word with such intensity, it's going to bring judgment against the lie. And so as much as you read the word, you have to have as much grace, as much anointing. And immediately... It was like God opened up my eyes 
He removed a veil and Holy Spirit fell on me and I had peace. I had shalom and I knew God would bring the anointing necessary in order for me to gain the freedom that I needed at that moment. Now, this is the process that I'm sharing with you. Why am I sharing it with you? Because this is the process of justification. Let's look particularly at Jeremiah 1 to get some understanding because this process of justification, it looks like this. A lot of people don't understand and you might feel like you're confused or you're losing your mind or you don't know if you can handle being a Christian again. Listen, if you feel that way, you are being justified. It might not feel good, but it's also indicating that you're being pruned as in John 15 too, for what? In order to bear much fruit. So when we're looking at this process that we are enduring, especially at the end of this year, this is a continual process until we meet Jesus and we are in our glorified body. No one will ever be perfect. We are being perfected, but there is only one perfect man. Amen. And that is Jesus Christ, the son of God. And so we are being perfected in that grace, in that love. So let's look at Jeremiah 1 and let's look at this process of justification and get some understanding. Amen, Lori. Amen, Robert. Amen, Kathy. So let's get some understanding. Jeremiah 1, I'm reading again out of the Amplified Classic. Amplified Classic. Here we say, here we see that God puts forth his hand and puts it on Jeremiah's mouth. In Jeremiah 1, verse 9. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have, a, have this day appointed you to the oversight of the nations and of kingdoms to root out, to pull down, and destroy, and to overthrow, and to build, and to plant. That verse, particularly Jeremiah 1, 10, is the distinction of the purification, justification process in our soul and where at times it might feel as though we almost feel like two people. If you feel like you're two people, what do I mean? Let me give you another testimony. Oh my goodness, God is just having me be so transparent today. Y'all are just going to love all these testimonies. So... It was probably about 2011, 2011, 2012, 2012. And I was going through this justification process continually. We're doing it all the days of our lives. There's more intensity in different seasons that you're in. And it's based on the circumstances, tribulations that you find yourself in. The in more intense the tribulations that you're in, the more you're going to be refined the more it's going to be exposed to the light, that which is not of God, in order for that justification process to continue so God can glorify himself in your life. Amen. And so one time, it was in 2012, I had just felt like there were literally two of me. And I had just been hit by Holy Spirit. And it was like God was dividing. I'm telling you, it was the most incredible profound experience of Hebrews 412 that I have ever had I've had so many supernatural encounters by the power of Holy Spirit but as it relates to Hebrews 412 where the Word of God comes in it divides between intent and motive between soul and spirit when you're in this justification process that Hebrews 412 division is going to be more pronounced. And it's so interesting because God's reminding me about our internet where the internet guy came in and he fixed a cable. And this actually has to go in with this message today. You're going to absolutely love it. And so I was in this process. And I'm telling you, it was crazy real <clears throat> how it was going on with me at that moment. It was Hebrews 4.12 and God was but dividing between my soul and my spirit. And I just felt like my spirit was over here and my soul was over here. And I literally, I kid you not, I literally thought there were two Robins. I knew there was a good Robin, but I also thought there was an evil Robin. 
She was very evil. And I just started crying. I started weeping. And it was like God was just laying out the different things that were not of Him and those things that were carnal nature, those things that were evil, those things that were not godly. And it was just like God cut me in two and divided between my soul and spirit. And the things that were in my soul that were distinctly not of God, it was so horrendous. I was just so abhorrent towards it. And I just started weeping uncontrollably. And I pulled off the side of the road and I just could not handle it. I could not stop weeping. I'm just messed up. I just am visited in the knowledge of where my soul is and my spirit man is being strengthened by Holy Spirit and I see my soul being laid bare by God and I am just messed up crying and I just called Rich because I did not know what to do and I said, Rich, there are two Robins. I found out today that there are two Robins. I did not know about this until today. And he said, Robin, what do you mean? And I was weeping that I could not speak. And he was calming me down. And he said, Robin, calm down. What are you talking about? And I said, Rich, there is an evil Robin. She is evil. She is so evil. And I'm telling you, I was utterly convinced in that moment because Hebrews 4.12 was so real. Hey, Terry Jackson, I love you. Been praying for you, sister. Hebrews 4.12 was so real I literally thought there were two Robins. There was an evil Robin and there was a good Robin. And basically the Lord was showing me areas of my soul that were in the process of that justification. And immediately God began to walk me through prayer. Rich assured me that I was not evil. I was not an evil person. He knew me well. But because my heart was so bare, and it was so transparent. It was the most horrendous thing to see that I could not bear to see it. And this, saints of God, is justification. Justification is a process where God is bringing judgment against the lie of the enemy in your soul. And without grace, it, you cannot endure it. It's impossible to endure it. And so there are many people that are on here. I know that I know because I did not bring this message. I didn't even know what I was going to teach when I got on here. I did not even know what the message was until God gradually has been bringing us to this message. And all the revelation is starting to hit all at once. There are those on here. You are in this justification process intensely as we wind up 2018. And God is purging us. He's purifying us. As I talked about that bleach, He's purifying us. He's making us white. And He's dividing between our intents and our motives. Why do you do what you do? That's what God is bringing to our heart right now. But this is what's interesting because I'm going to bring in what also happened with our internet. Remember, our internet wasn't working that great. And it would keep going in and out. The internet guy came in actually Monday night about 6 p.m., close to 6 p.m., and he said, you know what? You got too much power competing in your cable for all the devices that you're using. And I said, I'm, I can't understand that. Explain that to me. He said, okay, for your cable, you've got plenty of power, but this is the thing. All of your devices are competing for that power, and it's trying to figure out where to put that power at. And it's having a difficult time, so it weakens the signal. And he said, you know what I'm going to do? And this is what blew my mind, because this is what got our internet working. And this goes with this message of power. Woo! I'm going to turn around that one. Woo! Hallelujah. Do you understand? God wants to bring his power of Holy Spirit, and he wants to set you free. And he wants to bring in the justification of his word, amen, to give you strength and power. To know who He is in you. Amen. And so this is what the, the internet guy said. He said, you've got to have it split. I'm going to put a splitter on your uh, cable in the outside. And I'm going to put a splitter inside of your house. So look at this, saints of God. He put a splitter 
downstairs, and he put a splitter upstairs, so there is no competition from that one cable of where to give out power. And because there was a split on both the outside, woo, that will preach. I'm going to preach. I'm going to turn around again. Woo! Because there was a split, hallelujah, on the outside of the building and on the inside of the apartment, can I say this? God's trying to tell you. He's trying to split your carnal nature away from your soul on the inside, and it's going to show up, hallelujah, on the outside. Woo! Hallelujah. And power is going to flow in Jesus' name because you're not scatterbrained and you're not trying to do what you want to do. But glory to God, Holy Spirit is on you and Holy Spirit is going to move to do the Father's works because you do what the Father shows you. Woo! Hallelujah. So do you understand this, saints of God? That when the cable guy put the splitter on the outside of the building and put the splitter on the inside of our apartment, our devices run like that, and there is no problem. Is that not amazing? You know what he said was because they were competing for power. Wow! Woo! Listen to that revelation, saints of God. Because your soul nature... Your carnal nature, whether you know it or not, is competing for power. And Holy Spirit, hallelujah, brings power to our spirit man. And that brings power by Holy Spirit to our soul. And it does not compete with a carnal nature. And God is justifying us, hallelujah, as He purifies that carnality away from our soul that is competing and interfering with God's power. It is hindering us from moving in the greater works. And this is what God is doing in this hour. All of those who are watching, you should be experiencing very difficult trials. If you're not, that's all right. Sometime you will, and you'll remember this message, amen. You will feel like at times you're strong up here on the mountain, and you'll feel like sometimes you're down here, and for those super Christians who never feel like that, understand that there are no super Christians. There are only Christians. Amen? And transparency is very humbling. Be transparent because no one wants a super saint. There is no super saint. There is only Christ Jesus and Christians. And being a Christian means that, hallelujah, we are justified by Christ. We are being molded into the image of Christ. And I don't have to know what to do today. But what I do know, hallelujah, is that God is bringing His Word and He is exposing that carnal nature and He is removing it far from my person, hallelujah, that is trying to interfere with the power of God in my life. And God is cutting it off, hallelujah. And He's pouring out and filling us with the power of the righteousness of Christ Jesus, by which He will glorify us. Woo! Hallelujah. So, God, we thank You for this message. We thank You for the power. We thank You, God, that You are revealing truth. That You, Father God, are dividing between our soul and spirit. That You are exposing the carnal nature. And You are showing us, Father God, what is not of You. And we say, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, and amen, so be it in Jesus' name. And we say, yes, Lord, have your way in the name of Jesus. And we call forth strength and might by your spirit, Father God. Send it to us, O Lord, for we are desperate and hungry for your might, Father God. And we ask you, Father God, to strengthen us for this process of justification in order, Father God, that you are glorified in our lives. And we say yes and amen. And we praise your name. And we thank you, God, that you have done and are doing this work. In Jesus' name, amen. Now let's pray actually for those in the path of Michael. Father God, we take authority 
over this storm. Michael, we take the keys of the kingdom and we bind ruling powers and principalities that are bringing these men mechanical weaponized storms and we bind you DARPA in the name of Jesus and we say this storm shall fail in Jesus name we command it be lifted up in the name of Jesus and go into the air and disintegrate in Jesus name God for those in the area of the pathway we pray the blood of Jesus over them father God we come into agreement God we thank you God that you commission your angels in and around those areas God and that they will hold storms at bay that God they will hold the walls of houses up where they will not collapse upon the people and that God that you would spare every life in the name of Jesus Father God, that you would have mercy on us in this nation and that God, your church, your people, we are turning to you, hallelujah, and we ask you, God, for mercy in the name of Jesus and we thank you, God, that you are already working out every detail for every person in this path. We declare Psalm 91 protection over each and every person in the name of Jesus and we ask you, God, to bring the power of your shadow of God Almighty over every area where this storm is entering in Jesus' name. God, we ask you for testimonies to come out of this that will glorify your name. Hallelujah. And God, we pray in the name of Jesus that you will be a wall of fire around each and every person in this pathway in Jesus name and you God will be the glory in the midst of them in Jesus name amen Woo! hallelujah I love you you justified saints who are ready to be glorified in Jesus name I'll see you Friday Woo! in Jesus name